Hello, in this tutorial we'll be creating fully animated third person movement. As we can see, the player moves when we press the corresponding keys, will start running when we press the shift key and can also jump. The camera will also move as the cursor moves. If the camera gets too close to any object, rather than clipping through it, the camera will move in front of it. In this part we'll be focusing on player movement and in the next part we'll be focusing on camera controls. Firstly, I have a level set up here with an obstacle course we can use to test out our player movement. The starting project I have here is available on GitHub, which the link for is in the description. But of course, if you already have your own level and character, feel free to use them instead. So let's get started on with our player movement. First of all, let's navigate to the folder where our character model is located and drag it into the hierarchy. Let's reset its transform. Then let's create an empty game object and name it player. Let's also reset this transform. Then let's drag our character game object on top of our player game object to make it its child. On this player game object, we'll be placing our animator, character controller and our player movement script. On our player, let's add an animator. We'll then need to make an animated controller, so let's come back to our assets folder, right click click create new folder and let's name it animator then inside this folder let's right click create a new animation controller and name it player animator back on our player game object let's set our controller to the animated controller we just created and set the avatar to the avatar for our character model then let's open up the animator tab to do this let's go to window animation then animator here we'll be placing all of our animation that our character will be performing. First of all, let's right click, go to create state, then from new blend tree. Let's click on blend tree and rename it to locomotion. Then let's double click on it. We'll then see that our blend tree is dependent on a variable named blend. Let's rename this variable to speed instead. Then in the inspector, let's add free motion fields. Let's then change each of these fields to hold the idle animation, the walking animation, and finally the running animation. The threshold values next to each field represent the speed that must be achieved to reach that state. As we can see, a one dimensional graph has appeared, showing the range of speed from zero to one. Down here in the animation preview window, when we hit play, and change the value of speed. We can see our character transition into the walking state, then to the running state, and backwards. Finally, let's handle our jumping animation. Let's come out of our locomotion state and come back to our base layer. Let's then locate our jump animation and drag it into the animator. Then, with our locomotion state selected, let's right click and click make transition and then click on the jump animation. Let's then click the arrow and deselect has exit time. We'll then need a condition that the jump animation will occur under. So let's create a parameter of type trigger and name it jump. Then under conditions, let's select jump. Finally, let's select our jump animation, right click, make transition and then select locomotion. Here we'll be leaving the has exit time field ticked. So great, we've now set up all of our animation. We'll simply need to adjust our speed float and jump trigger in our player movement script and the animator will handle the rest. Back on our player game object, let's select add component and type in character controller. Let's then adjust the center radius and height so that the green cylinder fits nicely onto our character. Next, let's go back to our assets folder and create another folder called scripts. Inside of this folder, let's create a new c -sharp script called player movement. Let's double click it and open it up in Visual Studio for editing. First of all, let's start up by getting our references to the character controller. And 
and or animator. Then let's retrieve using start through the get component function. Next, let's create two floats, with the first being called warp speed and the second being called run speed. Finally, let's create a boolean called is running. In update, let's set is running to input.get key keycode.left shift. So if, if the user is pressing down the left shift button, then is running will be true, and if they aren't, is running will be false. To aid us with our movement calculations, let's create a method that returns a float called get current speed. Then depending on whether is running is true, will return run speed, and if running is false, it will return walk speed. Then above this get current speed method, let's create a new method called move. Inside, firstly, let's create a float called horizontal and set it to input.getAxis horizontal multiplied by get current speed multiplied by time dot delta time. Below, let's create another float, rename it to vertical, and set it to input.getAxis vertical multiplied by get current speed multiplied by time dot delta time. Next let's create a new vector free called move vector and set it to a new vector free consisting of horizontal, zero and vertical. Finally let's apply the movement through our character controller. Finally, let's make sure we call our move method an update. Back in Unity, let's drag our player movement script onto our player. Let's then set the walk and run speeds. I'll set it to 2 and 5 for now. Then when we press play, we'll see that our character moves in the directions we press. And then when we hold shift, our character speeds up. So great, we've got the movement working. Next, we'll make the character turn to face the direction they're heading in and also get the walking and running animations to play. Back in Visual Studio, let's create two more floats. One called turn speed and the other called anim speed. Back in our move method, let's type animator.set float speed then let's check if our move vector is equal to vector3.0. If it is, then let's assign our animator speed 0. But if it isn't, then let's check is running. If is running is true, then let's set the animator speed to 1. And if it's false, then let's set the animator speed to 0.5. Finally, let's pass in our anim speed and our time dot delta time. This should be all the code we need to get our animations playing. This middle expression is a little bit complicated, so let's use brackets to make it easier to interpret. So in this expression, if a player is not moving, then we're setting the animator speed to zero. And if a player is moving, we first you check if we're running. If we are running, then we set the animator speed to one. And if we're not running, then we set the animator speed to 0.5. Setting the animator speed to 0 will trigger the idle animation. Setting the animator speed to 1 will trigger the running animation. And setting the animator speed to 0.5 will trigger the walking animation. Now let's focus on getting our character to rotate and face the direction they are moving in. Below our move method, let's create a method called rotate, which will take in the movement vector as its argument. In this method, let's create a quaternion called target rotation and set it to quaternion dot look rotation move vector and vector free 
Do up. Below it, let's create another quaternion called new rotation and set it to quaternion dot lerp. First of all, let's pass in our current rotation, which is just transform dot rotation. Next, let's pass in our target rotation. And finally, let's pass in our turn speed multiplied by time dot delta time. Then below, let's apply the rotation. Then above in our move method, if our move vector is not equal to vector three dot zero, then let's call rotate and pass in our move vector. So let's head into Unity to test this out. Back in Unity, when we hit play, you'll notice that our character is not rotating and the transition between the animations is quite snappy. This is because we haven't set our turn speed or our animation speed. So I'll set my turn speed to five and my animation speed to about 0.2. And then we notice that our character nicely transitions from walking to running and back as well. It's definitely worth experimenting with all of these values to see what works best for your scenario. Finally, before we exit play mode, let's hit copy component, exit play mode, and then paste component values. So great, we've now got some nice movement and rotation going on. The final part of this video will focus on jumping and adding gravity. So let's head back over to Visual Studio. First, let's create three floats. Let's name the first one, jump speed. Let's name the second one, gravity. And let's name the final one, floor distance. Then let's also create a vector free called vertical vector. In start, let's initialize this vector to vector free dot zero. Then let's create a method called is grounded, which will return a boolean. Firstly, let's create a raycast hit called hit. Then if physics dot raycast transform dot position vector free dot down and out hit. So this line will cast a ray down from the character's feet and store information about the object hit within our hit object. Then return hit dot distance less than or equal to floor distance else return false above let's create a method called vertical movement first of all let's check if our character is grounded if they are then let's check if the jump button is also being pressed if it is, then let's set our vertical vector dot y to jump speed and also set the animator's jump trigger. Else, if our character is not grounded, then let's set the vertical vector's y component to itself minus gravity multiplied by time dot delta time. Finally, to prevent our character from still being pulled down by gravity whilst they are already grounded, let's check else if our vertical vector's y component is less than zero, then let's reset the y component to zero. Finally, let's apply our movement through the character controller. Finally, let's call our vertical movement with an update. Back in Unity, let's assign values to our jump speed, gravity and floor distance. For jump speed, I'll assign it 0.1 for now. For gravity, 0.15. And for floor distance, 0.02. Also in the character controller, let's set the slope limit to be 90 and drag the skin width down to the minimum. And when we press space, our character will jump. However, we'll notice that the jumping animation is a little bit delayed. So to fix this, 
let's go to our animator tab so let's go to window animation animator then let's let the arrow going from locomotion to the jump animation then move the arrow heads to make the animation transition much more quickly we can also select the arrow going from a jump animation and adjust the arrow head positions here to make the animation end much more quickly and transition back to locomotion okay so when we go back and press play and test out our jumping we'll see that the animation occurs much more quickly and she also transitions outwards much more quickly so great we finished all of our character movement next video we'll be adding the camera controls and then slightly adjusting the player movement script to make the movement relative to the camera's rotation so that's it for this part Thanks for watching.